So what is the real definition of inner child and how does it affect us and how can we overcome it? And to find out more, we will talk with a Jakarta Personal Growth Counselor, Rachel Poniman, who will explain more about the inner child and how it affects our daily life. Good morning, Rachel. Hi. Hi, good morning, everyone. Hi, hi. Thank so you for joining inner us. inner child yeah. is the part of your... I'm so sorry for cutting you off. It's okay, it's okay. I think it's the delay. Please explain to us how, um, what is the inner child? What is an inner child? So you couldn't say it better, um, but inner child is the part of your identity that's free, spontaneous, creative, and completely impulsive mm. in getting needs met. Um, I'm pretty sure you've heard about Freud, Sigmund Freud, yes, and his course. theory of id, ego, and super ego. Yes. So inner child is the id. So it represents oh. our basic instincts and drives. And super ego operates as a moral compass. The ego between the id and the super ego. Right. But technically, the inner child is the id. Right. So what is the benefit of understanding our inner child uh, for us and also probably for others around us? Um, you can have learning of yourself, right? Because mm -hmm. um, you know, um, sometimes the inner child can be triggered, mm -hmm. um, especially people who have this trauma can, you know, be triggered their own triggering events. Mm -hmm. um, so in this case, the inner child may take over and from crying, anger. So by being mindful of um, your consciousness, the inner child, it could help you live a healthier relationship too with other people right so uh you've been a counselor uh <clears throat> now for at least at least two years because uh this is this has been um what you've you've been studying uh in your adult life could you please give us an example or a case where uh you know when when the inner child is talking like uh, for example i i will just share you my personal case uh, Regina, um, the past seven years, it has been a journey mm -hmm. for me to actually uh, to understand my inner child because previously I was a lot more reactive mm. um, over things. You know, if I got angry, I would be explosive, and this was actually very not healthy in my family. Uh, it's not healthy for me, but also it is not healthy for those loved ones yeah. uh, around me. So, um, the, but that's the negative example of an inner child acting up because there was that trauma in it right so could you please give us a case where you know it's like when the inner child is uh, reacting and what is the impact on others and how do we control that so mm. that we become a more uh, or relatively well-rounded relatively mentally healthy adults that have to function with other people mm -hmm. okay so there's you know a lot of types of inner child but i'll talk about which is um, famous for being called the manipulator. Mm. manipulator. So it's, you know, it's where someone said, well, you said it, or I have been, I've been good all day. You mm. can imagine a child saying that, like, mm. I've been good all day. I should play my video games now um, whenever I want. So as they grow older mm. in adulthood, um, some may, you know, use manipulation as a way to get every need gratified oh. or, you know, out of fear of being direct with people. I see. Right. All right. So it's different to everyone. Mm -hmm. right? mm -hmm. Okay. So, Rachel, yes. I also want to know, to everyone. does everyone have this side of, um, of them inside? Mm -hmm. And um, if so, um, how can we maintain, maintain them so that uh, the outcome uh, doesn't have to be negative all the mm. time. Okay, so yes, we all have a little one, right? A little <laughs> one inside of us. Because um, as we come back to Freud's theory, we yeah. all have an id. Um, to identify our inner, inner child, we begin by asking your adult self to be a little open and possibly vulnerable. Right. And as you get to know your inner child, you may notice that it's needing healing. Um, it may need some more, more physical safety, 
more attention to the way you're taking care of, you know, your mind, your body, mm. your soul, maybe healing past pains, set, setting boundaries in life or who you spend time with. Oh, okay. And for some people, this is called reparenting. Reparenting. Your inner child. All right. So How do you reparent? So it can be a little tricky, right? Mm. To to heal or to heal or you know, reparent your negative inner child. So it's not always negative. Yes. For that, because you know our inner child is the forgiving, free-spirited part of us mm. that still feels and experiences life as a child. All right. So it's rich in connections mentality. But sometimes it could be wounded, like, um, for example, you're a people pleaser or you feel guilty when setting boundaries. Mm. Those are like, you know, wounded, negative inner child. Okay. Right. Okay. So how do you and know? And how you yeah. can heal. Yes, go on. Oh, sorry. It's okay. Go on, Regina. So you were asking how to heal the negative child. Yes. Um, the most important is to connect communicate and nurture yourself nurture. to acknowledge that you have like an inner child within mm -hmm. um, you need to gather insight about who you were maybe as a child too um, you could also you know um, ask for a help of a psychologist yeah. okay. we can connect with ourselves more you know by possibly writing a letter to your inner child really? and forgive ourselves that's wow, good. that's nice. I want to talk to the five-year-old me. <laughs> yes, you should. <laughs> you should. We all should. So it's interesting that you mentioned reconnecting because, uh, you know, it's like there are, well, to make it easy, there are probably two groups of people, right? Mm -hmm. one, uh, one group that is probably aware that, oh, maybe I, I, had, I have this wound that, that I need to heal. Mm -hmm. Something happened with me when I was a child and it's affecting the way I act now, the way I function now as an adult. But I also see, based on my personal observation, mm -hmm. that there are people who just go autopilot, <laughs> right? They, they, don't, they don't realize that they actually need to tend to themselves. Like, mm -hmm. hey, you know, it's like, I think you need to slow down a little bit. Yeah. And they, just decide, they usually decide to just like go yeah. escape. Either they work really hard or, you know, go do some other denial. escapism or denial sometimes. Yeah. Now, for this group of people, for example, how do they wake themselves up and say, stop, take care of yourself? How, how, how do we give birth to that awareness for this particular group of people? Because it's painful to live autopilot, yeah. in my opinion. Um, so it's definitely easier said than done, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and there's so much we could do to help um, other people because it all depends on them, right? It's their yeah. life, it's their sense. But what we can do is maybe set an example, um, encourage them, motivate them to, to have compassion, right, for themselves mm. and to be more mindful in their lives. Mm. Mm. Okay. All right. Okay. <laughs> so, do you have any tips, um, Rachel, for us? Um, if we saw that um, our inner child is coming, what should we do to, you know, tame it? Um. So, first of all, you need to be, you know, compassionate too, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, being mindful of, oh, what is it saying? What is it telling me to do? How can I take from that what, you know, what does that mean? Okay. And to be more mindful of our actions, mm. but also considering our inner child. All right. Mm. Okay. Do you have any practical mm. techniques that you suggest to your clients, for example, to, to care for our inner, inner child better, especially the negative one? The positive one is great because we're so <laughs> playful. I like Disney. I know, <laughs> right? So that's the inner child in our adulthood, the positive one. What about the negative one? Do you have any practical techniques to take care of the negative one and probably transform it into a positive one? Mm -hmm. So what I like to practice is to 
ask my patients to take their time and try to forgive themselves. Try to forgive. Um, it may be a little bit cringy because you have to like <laughs> tell yourself, oh, I'm sorry, please forgive me. Yeah. I love you. Aww. Thank you. So more like self-affirmation. Right. Self-affirmation. Now speaking this of like the parenting part of like the inner child. parenting. Okay. Right. So it is clearly it is important to give tender loving care towards ourselves, right? Okay. Because I think we become better people not only for ourselves but also for those around That's us, true. right? Shana? That's true. So how do we because but sometimes, you know, there are people who said, "Hang on Marissa, hang on Shanas." Then how do you differentiate then between caring for your inner child and just being plain selfish? <laughs> <laughs> So how, what's your answer for that? Because some people do, so they don't know how to differentiate between the two. Okay, so a health thing to balance, right? Of yourself, your me time, your relationships, your um, work time, for example, right? Work-life balance. Mm -hmm. So it's easier said than done, but by being aware of your own limitations and strengths, you know how to control you more okay. of what to do what to do and asking for advice from a friend or like professional would really help to okay. to be unbiased of yourself unbiased okay thank you so much rachel mm -hmm. for the awakening so that we can nurture ourselves more <laughs> to be a better person um, but sometimes whenever my inner child came up i always um Maybe sometimes I take a little um, swim or run yeah. around the house and maybe watch some cartoons because uh -huh. it helps me feel better. <laughs> Thank you, Rachel. Once again, stay safe. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Rachel. No worries. Thank you for having Thank me. You.